Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the daily quiz discussion for the 21st of July 2022. Before we begin, a few updates on our initiatives. Preparing for the current affairs remains one of the most challenging aspects with regard to the UPSC Civil Services preparation. Ensuring a time-bound yet comprehensive preparation of the current affairs remains a key to cracking this exam. In this regard, we are glad to announce a workshop on how to prepare current affairs for the upcoming UPSC CSE 2023 exam. This session will be held on the 23rd of July at 6 p.m. This session will be handled by Mukesh Jasar. Please note, this workshop, which is free, would be held exclusively on the Baiju's exam prep app. So to take part in this workshop, you need to download the app and register for the workshop. You can find the registration link in the description box below. Also note, tomorrow, that is 22nd of July, join us live for a discussion on the I2U2 Summit. This session would be handled by Chetan sir under our weekly current affairs explained series. Do set a reminder for the same and do join us live. Beginning with the first question of the day, which reads, consider the following statements. There are three statements given here. The first one reads, the cheetah was declared extinct in India in the year 1952 and is the only wild cat to go extinct in independent India. The second statement reads, financial and administrative support to the cheetah reintroduction program in India would be provided by the National Tiger Conservation Authority of India. The last statement reads, cheetahs are mostly associated with grasslands, scrublands and open forest type wildlife habitats. Which of the following statements are correct? Please have a look at the options given. Now, what is the context? India and Namibia recently signed an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, on wildlife conservation and sustainable biodiversity utilization. A notable aspect with respect to biodiversity conservation under this MOU would involve conservation and restoration of cheetah in the former range areas of India from which they went extinct. Note, Cheetahs were declared extinct from India in the year 1952. Currently, cheetahs are found primarily in the eastern and southern ranges of Africa, south of the Sahara Desert. Notably, small populations of cheetah can be found in North Africa and Iran as well. Coming back to our question, the first statement is correct because the cheetah was declared extinct in India in the year 1952 and it is the only wild cat to have gone extinct in independent India, that is post-1947. The second statement is also correct. The National Tiger Conservation Authority of India would oversee the cheetah reintroduction program in India. It will provide the necessary financial and administrative support to the program. The third statement is also correct. This is the reason why cheetahs are proposed to be reintroduced in Madhya Pradesh Kuno National Park. Kuno National Park is known for its grasslands and scrublands and open forest type wildlife habitat. Since the question are for the correct statements, the answer to this question would be option D, 1, 2 and 3. Moving on to the second question, which reads, consider the following statements with respect to Indian sandalwood tree, also known as Santalum album. This is the scientific name. There are two question statements given here. The first one reads, it is a small tropical tree native to southern India and southeast Asia. The second statement reads, it is semi-parasitic in nature and parasitizes the roots of other tree species with a hastorium adaptation on its own root. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Please have a look at the options given below. What is the context? This article from today's The Indian Express takes note of the initiative to plant sandalwood trees in the national capital region. This follows direction of the current Delhi Lieutenant Governor Vinay Kumar Saxena. Notably, horticultural experts have expressed their doubts over the success of this plantation drive based on the argument that the sandalwood trees, which are predominantly tropical in nature, would not be able to thrive in the dry and arid climatic conditions of Delhi. Coming back to the question. The first statement is correct because the Indian sandalwood tree is basically a small tropical tree. When I mean small, it is in relative comparison to other tropical trees. Also note, 
the indian sandalwood tree is native to southern india and southeast asia the first statement is correct consider the second statement the second statement is also correct this is because the sandalwood tree completes its nutritional requirements from other plants hence it is parasitic in nature why is it called semi parasitic it is called semi parasitic because it does not have any major detriment on its host now how does it parasite on other trees through structures known as hostorium now what are hostorium hostorium are nothing but tube like structures which are basically modified roots this sort of parasitism helps the santalum album or the indian sandalwood tree get essential macronutrients phosphorus nitrogen and potassium from the host plants since the question asks for the correct statements the answer to this question would be option c both 1 and 2 moving on to the third question which reads which of the following statements is or are correct with respect to exposat the two question statements are as follows the first one it is a planned space observatory which would study polarization of cosmic x rays the second statement reads when launched it would be india's first astronomical observatory in space please have a look at the options given what is the context this article from today's the indian express takes note of the space missions of the indian space research organization or the isro it notes india space observatory exposat is scheduled to be launched next year coming back to the question exposat is a telescope being developed by the indian space research organization isro and the raman research institute note that the exposat was supposed to be launched in the year 2021 but has been delayed due to the pandemic exposat is a dedicated indian polarimetry mission to study polarization of cosmic x rays note polarization is a very important property of radiation from astrophysical sources it carries information regarding the emission mechanism physical conditions as well as emission geometry at the origin the polarization measurements in x rays can provide unique opportunity to study the behavior of matter under extreme magnetic fields and extreme gravitational fields hence the exposat satellite can provide useful insights regarding pulsars binary stars and galactic cores so the first statement is correct the second statement is wrong why because exposat is not india's first astronomical observatory in space we have astrosat which is india's first space telescope as against the proposed exposat which studies only x rays astrosat studies celestial sources in x ray optical as well as uv spectral bands simultaneously since the question asks for the correct statements the answer to this question would be option a one only moving on to the fourth question which reads consider the following statements with respect to domestic steel production in india there are three question statements given here the first one reads the public sector led by steel authority of india accounts for larger steel production as compared to the private sector in india the second statement reads karnataka accounts for the largest steel production among states in india the last statement reads the share of domestic production in the consumption of finished steel has been increasing in india over the last 3 years which of the following statements is or are correct now what is the context this article from the pib provides data on the domestic production of steel in india it provides data for the last 3 years coming back to the question the first statement is wrong why because in india the private sector produces much more steel as compared to the public sector the domestic steel production by the private sector is almost four times the steel production by the public sector also the second statement is wrong why because it is not karnataka but it is odisha which accounts for the largest steel production among states in india the rorkela steel plant operated by the steel authority of india in odisha is one of the largest capacity steel plants in india for the third statement let us go back to the pib article the percentage share of domestic production in consumption shows a increasing trend 
this augurs well because it signifies reducing import dependency for india with respect to steel notably india also exports a certain amount of steel to other countries now a question would arise when india itself is importing steel how will it be able to export steel please note there are different varieties of steel some varieties of steel might not be manufactured domestically within india in such cases india might be importing such varieties while some varieties are abundantly available more than the consumption needs of the country in such scenarios such type of steels are exported based on demand from our discussion it is clear that statement 3 is correct since the question asks for the correct statements the answer to this question would be option b 3 only moving on to the last question of the day this is a question from the upsc 2019 prelims general studies paper 1 The question reads Consider the following statements about the Charter Act of 1813 There are three statements given here the first one reads It ended the trade monopoly of the East India Company in India except for trade in tea and trade with China The second statement reads It asserted the sovereignty of the British Crown over the Indian territories held by the company here I mean the East India Company The third statement The revenues of India were now controlled by the British Parliament Which of the statements given above are correct? Please have a look at the options given below. Note the Charter Act of 1830 was a landmark development during the rule of the East India Company in India. One of the most notable aspects of the Charter Act of 1830 was the end of the trade monopoly of the East India Company in India. That is, East India Company did not enjoy the complete monopoly of trade in India. Other traders from Britain. were also allowed to indulge in trade with india however two aspects of this trade that is trade in tea and trade with china was retained as monopoly of the east india company this too ended with the charter act of 1833 so the first statement is correct the second statement is also correct why because the charter act of 1813 had a clause asserting the crown's undoubted sovereignty over all of the company's territories in india the third statement is wrong the control over the revenues of india to the british parliament was enacted through the pitts india act of 1784 and not the charter act of 1813 since the question asks for the correct statement the answer to this question would be option a 1 and 2 only Other notable provisions of the Charter Act of 1813 include the grant of 1 lakh rupees per annum for the promotion of education in India. Also, the Charter Act of 1813 gave power to local governments to impose and collect taxes. Next, moving on to the fact of the day, minimum support price or the MSP. What is the context? Recently, the union government notified a committee to make msp that is the minimum support price more effective and transparent the government has named 26 members including the chairman of the committee the committee would be headed by former agriculture secretary sanjay agrawal in this respect let us understand a few basic terminologies and aspects related to minimum support price note it is the union government that announces the msp for 22 mandated crops this announcement of the msp is based on the recommendations of the cacp that is the commission for agricultural costs and prices note while recommending the msp the cacp takes into account various factors factors such as demand and supply cost of production market trends profit margin and implications of msps on consumers Basically the CACP calculates three types of costs let us understand what these three are this includes a2 a2 plus fl and c2 note a2 is the lowest of all these three costs and it is the actual paid out cost incurred by a farmer next we have a2 plus fl which is the actual paid out cost plus imputed value of family labor so here fl stands for family labor next we have c2 this is the highest of the three costs it is defined as comprehensive cost including 
rental value of own land. Note, although the CACP calculates all three costs, eventually it recommends and the government announces MSP on the basis of A2FL. The Swaminathan Commission had recommended C2 plus 50% formula as the basis for recommending MSPs. That is all we have for today's discussion. Thank you for being with us.